Hello and welcome back to the Battle Right Pro League here, ladies and gentlemen, the BPL. I am Wade Dreadnought Penfold, and with me up here is going to be in the flesh himself. And already here, Young Sung with a major upset back to back two weekends over Space Station Gaming Oof. and Entropy able to earn themselves a victory over Excel Wizards. Yeah, and, and with no bias at all, I'm so happy to see Entropy come in here and take this game. Uh, of course, Niwa, a fan favorite, so a lot of people are going to be sad to see him go down in his match. But Entropy, they looked, they struggled a lot week one. And to see them bounce back is very cool. Yeah, to be honest, uh, when I reflected on week number one and then like seeing what we saw here today, I was very pleasantly surprised yeah. with the performance level of Entropy. And it's going to be exciting to see where that unfolds. But we got to figure out what action we have for you guys here today in no or North America. And it's going to be Atrocity Exhibition up against Fable Esports next up here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is going to be a good one. Uh, so to touch on these two teams a little bit, this is a repeat of a match in week one. Fable won 5-2. So Atrocity, they're going to have to stay up their game if they want to take it against Fable. Uh, and I think they have a couple comps uh, in mind to bring to the table against Fable Esports. Uh, but e Fable Esports, they're going to be bringing a hot new comp to the table. Uh, I, I know in scrims they've be, been practicing a lot of Rook. Hi there, the best Rook player in the world. I'll say it. I'll drop it. Uh, I hate using absolutes, but I'll drop it for my boy High there. He is incredibly good on this Rook, and with the buffs that Rook just saw, uh, I'm so scared for Atrocity. Yeah, Atrocity Exhibition here maybe has to fear the that Rook there coming out from High there. It, it is going to be exciting to see, you know, if that ends up coming out here from them as a group. Is there? Can you maybe make an argument as to why suddenly we're going to see a Rook? Because we went through almost Rookless, if you will, throughout the entirety of Week One of BPL. Yes, I, I think it's just a comfort thing. Okay, I think teams hadn't had long enough after the patch to warm up to these new comps. And of course, the patch just hitting maybe three days before the BPL. Not very much time to adjust to a new play style. And Rook, he kind of dictates you do one thing. So uh, he takes a little bit to get used to. What is that one thing that Rook ends up doing? Go. <laughs> I was going to say smash, so I'm glad Rook that smash. I'm, as long as we're on the same line here. <laughs> yeah. Rook, go. I, Rook, go. That, that's a good way to put it there. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Rook is without a doubt one of the most in-your-face melee characters oh, that yeah. exists within Battle Right. Uh, he's pretty much the, if you you haven't learned to not hit a counter, he's a great hero to really teach you what that looks like oh. when you end up proccing it. <laughs> yeah, you, you hit that counter, sometimes you just end up eating like 40 damage, and then he has enough energy to eat, he heals for 24 and 24 over time, and then you just don't do anything. And he has some of the well, in my opinion, uh, most creative, but also maybe not creative names of spells that exist in the smack. game. Like smack <laughs> is just one I find that, or eat, I find that hilarious. <laughs> Meat throw, like he's got some of the cooler. Boulder toss. Boulder, they're just so basic, <laughs> they fit him. They fit yeah. Rook, they sound yeah. very, you know, Rook smashes here. Draft unfolding between Atrocity Exhibition and Fable Esports. We'll see if we get ourselves a Rook. If we do, draft-wise, would you yeah. expect a position? That Dude. was exactly, do you first pick this yeah. or last pick They that? don't care. High there Doesn't is on your afraid. team. You pick Rook. Rook is good. You pick Rook for High there. You Rook. Uh, so we see it first pick. Man, that really speaks volumes to the strength of Rook. This character generally so exploitable in terms of his matchups. Like, you could pair a Jade against him and have no problems. But Rook, after these past couple buffs, he's sitting pretty and he's good enough to first pick that's mind-blowing yeah exactly to go from a zero percent involvement rate uh to a willing to be first picks i feel like type situation that shows a drastic spike in pick because that information gives you two more to be able to respond towards that rook so if there is any trade-off it shows that like it could be counterable so to walk out here fable esports goes we open with the rook that is a bold in any draft of yeah. any kind of game whatsoever a bold move here so i'm excited to see the confidence there from high there and the way you've been building it up here, you know, I feel like we got a show here. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we'll see an Esmo pick coming out of Atrocity Exhibition to round off out this draft. And if I had to say for Fable, I think we'll see a Jade. I think Jade pairs very nicely with Rook and Esmo, a, a favorite of Flappy Penguin on Atrocity Exhibition. Yeah. We do see both of these picks. Man, th this is why they pay me six figures. Yeah, dust the shoulders <laughs> off here in the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, it is ITF the man predicting <laughs> the back end there of that draft. Uh, you know, I, I feel like you can sniff out a Jade a mile away, but the Esmo call, that was a creative one there. Yeah, yeah so I really like this comp from Fable Esports. Uh, if a little bit of a humble brag here, back when I played competitively, this was the comp my team ran. Uh, when I played with Emperor and Vorium, we, we ran this comp for like six months. The burst potential, stupid. It's so dumb if you land a snipe from Jade off of uh, with armor break, you can start doing like upper 40s in damage, and even just quicksand and Older's M1s off of um, Rook's in caps and armor break, yeah. you, you just hurt so much. And the nice thing about having Older in this comp is the Rook is there. Rook has a lot of self-sustained with his EXM1, so we're not going to see a repeat of the Excel Wizards match where there wasn't end up healing with the older involved. So there's going to be a nice yeah. amount of healing with the Rook since he can eat and heal 24 immediately. And Jade also has a little bit of healing off of Delight, her disabling shot battle right, which I assume we'll see take 
mistaken. Um, yeah. So really, really well-rounded comp. I, I really like to see it out of Fable Esports. Atrocity Exhibition, they have their work cut out for them. They're, of course, they have the older to fight back against the Jade, so the snipes aren't going to be free by yeah. any means. Um, but still, even if they just end up landing like one snipe combo on Fable, they're going to have a huge HP pool to work with. And it does kind of get doubly difficult, if you will, in the fact that there is Raygon with the opportunity to get the deflect as well. Fireblaze looking to make sure that those snipes are yeah, a little yeah. bit more difficult. But I, when, I think that was a great point that you brought up. The specifically, we saw Old Doors at the last round. We were like, oh, difficult. You know, look at these long fights. They can't win through that sustain and attrition. And here we got double single support Old Doors on the opposite side of the battlefield. But I feel like when looking at the sustain that those individuals provide, on their own, it's very different. Their individual survivability of who's paired with them. The Rook Jade, it feels like miles above it. Specifically, Raygon does have decent survivability on yes, his own, yes. but it doesn't feel like it, it cross compares to a, a Rook it's not by like any Rook. means. Yeah. And then it feels like, in my opinion, again, Esmo, he's that kind of mosquito in the fact that he's hard to get on, but yep. it doesn't change the fact that his individual survivability, he has to rely heavily either on his directional shield or his EX shield yep. or even you know his life siphon there with his EX I believe it is right click there. I use the one and two. One, yeah. It's M1, excuse me, not M2. But yeah, the orb is going to be so incredibly important for Atrocity Exhibition. Of course, Esmo Ultimate, so good for securing the orb. They're definitely going to need it. Right now, though, Raygon able to find himself a pretty profitable trade there onto that Jane. Going to send that Dragon Palm, send it flying back. It'll set things up Ooh, for now. Boy. Look at Raygon completely oh, kind of split there on Anila. And there is all oh. that damage in the choke. And look at this. Unable to escape from this. Fire Blaze is going to be sent out of here. Rook, go. <laughs> Rook, go. He charge in. He find an in cap. He get that burst. And then the enemy is dead. Huge, uh, beautiful play there from the Rook. The older <laughs> ultimate from Stro is going to uh, solve this or finish off this round. And man, I spent so much time being excited for Hyther's Rook. I didn't even talk about Stroh's older. This is the OG older in North America. This dude tore up the tournament scene uh, in like the first year the, of the game game's existence. Yeah. He is far and away the best older in North America. And to see these two paired together, this is so scary. And I mean, I don't mean to be the guy that kind of, you know, Mixes up the tone here a little bit, but did you see that Skinergy too? All BPL skins. Oh, that was nasty. Oh, yeah. That was dirty. Did yeah. you see those? Yeah. Quick, my goodness. Quick. I'm throwing my dollars at the <laughs> screen right now. Buy your skins on SLS, Twitch, quick. Please. <laughs> Look at that. Another trade there for the Rook as he oh, finds boy. the slam and the in cap there. Trading pretty positively into Esmo. Oh, man. His counter's not proc, though, and the punish is huge. Oh. So unfortunate, he chose to use that energy for his in cap instead of his eat, and now Hyther has been absolutely crippled in terms of HP pool. Another counter not being proc'd, and this is pretty scary here. Hyther is able to survive, but Atrocity uh, Exhibition secures the orb. A beautiful oh combo on Destro, though. My god. Love the bait and switch there with the amount of pressure that they had already set up onto Hyther, and then when you see that older Hurug go down, they were like, nope, swapping targets. We're going to move on to Stro there with that brilliant in cap. Amazing play and fighting back here for Atrocity. Seems like, uh, you know, Rook, for the amount of going that he has, it turns out he can very easily be stopped yeah. just as fast there. <laughs> he can absolutely stop, too. And we saw him stop on a dime due to that Esmo damage. Flappy Penguin, with beautiful understanding of this Esmo, drops that book, and when the counter is not proc'd, he just lays into High there, getting a huge burst of damage. And all of that because High there chose to use his in-cap instead of his yeah. eat. It's so incredibly important on Rook to be able to eat and heal up for 24 when playing aggressively. And when you don't have that energy, Esmo's going to pop you. Hey, I think it would have been far more acceptable in that type of positioning if the counter had ended up getting hit, yes, right? Yes, then you yes. would have gotten the, the slam trade of the energy would have been worth it, but then willing to go for that high risk, but then the patience out of atrocity, not willing to proc it there. That was what I was referring wow. to a little bit before as why Rook is such a good trainer to not hit those counters in the game because one counter hit and already Fireblaze falling down to 10% HP at this point in time. Orb control is going to be necessary, but slam, or excuse me, Rook hitting another M2. It ends up sending the members very, very weak, and already Fireblaze Cleaning shop here from yeah, a fable. I had to blink. Uh, did you see where Fireblaze went? Uh, I, I opened my eyes up and he was gone. Yeah, he no, he was very much uh, kind of deleted here. Flappy <laughs> Penguin doing his best to kind of rebuttal back with that Esma ultimate, but he's going to be removed here. Two rounds now for a fable esports. So why this is the absolutely most dominant rounds that we've seen three deep. Very, very fast, very much in favor of one team. What is yes. the difference between these rounds? It's Rook. If Rook can get in and apply that armor if he can go. and not die, if he can go, they'll be good. And the, these rounds where Fable are successful is when Rook has found an opening. Landing that first charge, so incredibly important. We saw High there with a beautiful mix-up on his charge that last round. He aimed it at Flappy Penguin to start off with and flicked it towards Fireblaze, and then Fireblaze didn't have his parry prepared, and just the snowball, it rolled from that point. Set up here. 
Rook able to go in, find a pretty good trade there onto Odor. M2 is going to be dropping onto Raygon as you already see Fireblaze chunk to 50%. And before the first orb even spawns here, back to back, every time Fable Esports, they end up hitting that space from the Rook. They do exactly what we've been saying. They go. Orb control falling over to Atrocity after a nice M2 from Flappy Penguin. But for now, falling below in percentage is near 100% on Fable Esports, where a little bit less on Atrocity. Yeah, Freak has his ultimate. They're going to need to look for a big combo here. Flappy Penguin almost farmed up enough energy for his ultimate. He drops the book instead, trying to pump out some damage onto Stro, but Flappy is spaced and he used his shield, but the older ultimate's available. And now they're going to burst down Stro, the ultimate from Esmo with this... Um, the Freak's ultimate going to get a huge burst of damage. Yeah, good job there from Fireblaze. Actually, get the mid orb. Going to lead to an old oh. door. A lot oh. of damage with the quick slam and the slam going down there with that M2 from high there. And they end up getting the damage. Freak is going to drop there. Raygun ult, it's nice stacking mm. there to try and buy, you know, minimizing the amount of damage possible from that Raygun ultimate. The Repost not going to get the stun this time. Raygon gone, but nice attempt there, even on the two versus three out of Atrocity. Yeah, it was a good effort. You know, that ultimate from Flappy Penguin almost found the kill on Stro, but Stro just barely able to WASD out of it. Uh, interesting battle right choice is coming out from uh, My Name is Keith. I noticed he has the stealth bomb on his Q, uh, really, really detrimental to the Rygon. Rygon, a character that wants to go in and train. Uh, when Jade stealths, however, and she's going to drop that bomb, which has the fading snare attached to it, makes it very hard for Fireblaze to keep up his roll. Mix that with the lack of information of where the heck your Jade is. Yep. It makes it a pretty difficult time, not even considering all the other tools she has to deal promptly with those melee heroes. That atrocity here. It feels like... Without a doubt for me, the first 15 seconds of this round, we have to find a situation where Fireblaze is not able to get chunked below that 50%. That every round Fable Evil Sports has been able to win. It has been through that right there, ladies and gentlemen. The opening there with that M1, even hitting the space there from Rook. That was a bit more intended, though, as it was a, blo a block there. But the trade not as, you know, kind of difficult as they have been in the past right now. Fireblaze is actually even able to hit the space yeah. and double Dragon Palm. Fireblaze getting a lot done on this back line, but it's looking like the red team's going to be able to secure the orb. As I say that, Hyder charges away for it, instead opting for damage, and Fable still secures the first orb. Ultor drops the ultimate. Trade's going to go in, and huh. Hyder not able to make it out. Uh, yeah, a little bit unfortunate there. I think there was a miscast. I think Stro, he used his ultimate on himself accidentally when Hyder desperately needed it, and I think that's going to loot cost him the round. Yeah, that was uh, very interesting there. For I was the whole time I was like, wait a minute here, what is going on there? But not able to have it. And now my name is Keith. Gonna be the last man standing. Yep. A bit inconvenient. One v three here. Keith probably not gonna be able to pull this one off. He gets that Jade stun onto two. He's finally gonna fall to the older though. A really nice play from Fireblaze. We we talked about how he opened up with that huge double dragon palm and oh, just yeah. the damage he output forced Fable to play on the back foot for a little while. Yeah, and that was one of the first times after, you know, the dismount, if you will, that he didn't yes. just immediately get chunked down, that, you know, his true HP was within a reasonable kind of threshold. And, uh, you know, for me, I, I oftentimes, when I look at melees within Battle Rite specifically, I often consider what is the amount of HP that I feel like I feel comfortable when I have cooldowns that I can take a trade and actually net something for my team. And Raygon is one of those ones that it's usually on the higher end where I feel that comfortable. Granted, I'm a pretty terrible Raygon, not going to lie here. So, hey, But it, 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 that, that kind of trade where we see him fall pretty low. This is fine because the true HP is that healthy, but any lower than this, it's going to be in sketchy territory. Yeah, this is looking a little bit dicey. A nice snipe cancel from Keith gets out the parry. Now Rygon, he's used his heavenly strike as well. There's a bit of an opening here to punish him, but a beautiful pull from Flappy is peeling all of the enemies off of him. Fireblaze being a little bit more healthy than he should due to the pressure Flappy's putting out. Rook able to hit the space bar there onto Uldur. Ultimate going to drop here, oh. not going to net anything. If anything, putting risky positioning there. Parry is going to buy a bit of time and room there, breathing room for Fireblaze, able to make it out. He hits the E on to Stroh, but Orb up. Control goes, not going to use the Snipe actually on it, swapping it and getting the flick over onto Penguin. He oh. drops that ultimate. Oh, he's going to get Rook. He gets a huge burst of damage, which is so bad for the Rook player. The EXQ from Jade is going to be there to keep him alive, but things are so dicey now for High there. Reset here between the teams. 58 to 50% in terms of that HP. Orb up. Nice Q there from Oldor by the time. Fable able to pick up that control over that orb. Spacebar goes in onto Fireblaze. Not going to burn that kind of deflect yet. E is hit. Oldor ult goes down. Not going to oh. land. The response Oldor ult is going to look towards Rook there. The repose stun comes out with the silence onto the Raygon. Fireblaze healing oh. himself up there with that M or EXM1. And now they turn. Oh they my focus God. down. 
Flappy Penguin there on that Esmo. Talk about some control here from Fable. Blue gets the orb though, Atrocity Exhibition definitely not out of this one as Rook is incredibly low, but this snipe combo likely going to finish off Flap, uh, Fireblaze. And man, that's the power of this comp, that huge in-cap combo just off of a single stun. It's pretty dangerous. Such a you know clever uh, use there out of the double dual ult. It's one of my favorite kind of situations that can happen within battle right because we do have those mirror matchups available it's kind of one of those well if you use your spell first your iframe first it's almost always going to be worse right than yep. the person kind of getting the response there and we see it coming to light here in the professional battle right league the professional battle right I, league. I meant battle right professional league i don't know what i was going for but there you know uh sometimes i was just thinking it had a nice ring to it you know uh, you're, well, you're over here being critical i'm just like man that's sick i love battle right you know uh in the flesh here i though we are new uh, in terms of our friendship and our bond here. I think it's pretty apparent that I am the negative Nancy of this duo. <laughs> and you are the silver lining that exists within this world. I'm the positive patty. Yeah, positive patty <laughs> here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Big punish here on the Flappy Penguin. But Rook doing no better. He's already burst down to 130. Not desirable for the melee. Yeah, hi there. Not able to hit the counter or get the counter proc this time. Ooh. Orb control going to our atrocity as well. Going to lead to a Raygon ultimate. Not going to net too much there. But Raygon's more of a setup there with this kind of ultimate. Nice Esmo ultimate, but it doesn't gain too much for the team either. Uldur is going to go ahead and drop one for himself as well. The members of Fable Esports kind of eking ahead with Ooh. that damage that they got on the Flappy. Yeah, this is not great. Flappy Penguin is so incredibly low. The HP pools are even, but all of the blue team's HP is on Fireblaze. A little bit of a swap up for the oh. past couple rounds. A beautiful Chaos Grip gets a decent amount of damage onto Keith. And up top, Fireblaze is trying to 1v2, but it's not so successful as Hyther sets up an in cap. This is not good. They get a decent amount of damage, but actually not nearly as much as I thought they would. Yeah, but Atrocity is pulled back into this. HP is yeah, looking yeah. at dead even. The orb control is going to spawn here in four seconds, but the damage from high there, he throws out oh God, the E, HP. but he survives at one HP. Orb control going over to Fable. They're going to drop the old Dural, getting the response there, comes back down. They need this. They need this. They oh. got to get it. Oh, they're not able to get that kill. And with that, the round's likely going to go to Fable, as is the match. Holy yep. cow. Next to fall. Talk about action packed here from Fable Esports, though. And, yeah, we, and we also saw the... Same trend that we saw out of week number one of BPL, of that kind of back and forth for our first four rounds, and then one team very able to kind of pull ahead. But granted, those first you know couple of rounds that did end up going back and forth, it was dominant yeah. by whoever ended up winning it. Very able to pull back ahead, or very fable to pull back ahead. Kill, <laughs> kill me, please. <laughs> but yeah, a, a repeat of round one, these two teams matched up. Atrocity Exhibition went down 5-2, uh, as did they this week. So, you know, Fable, they're showing they're not just a, a one-trick wonder, even breaking out this different play style and looking incredibly good doing it. I'm excited to watch these guys as BPL progresses. I think we can title that the Fabled Rook from the now on. <laughs> it is the Fabled Rook of High there, and whether or not we're going to get it in the future. But a great victory there from the members of, excuse me, from he, Noble Esports. He's literally the Rook of Fable. The right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he very much is. That's a, that's a legendary title to be able to claim for themselves. But, uh, you know, was there anything that maybe when reflecting on some of the action that we got out of that last game that you would have liked to see different from, the, you know, the opponents from Atrocity? Uh, I think, like we saw those rounds, Atrocity Exhibition be successful. Uh, Rygon's initiations were very, very good. Uh, I think Fireblaze, a lot of weight was on his shoulder to perform this game. Yeah. And he did a couple of those rounds, but naturally, like there was just too much he had to do. That was such a hard draft for him to be successful on. Of course, Jade uh, building that Fading Snare battle right off of Stealth, as well as having the Blast Vault extended stun. It's just so hard, man. Yeah, I was just going to ask, is, is that compositional, right? With the Eldur yeah. solo support, with how much pressure that puts the team to have that time? Time sensitivity, but then if Rhaegar doesn't get that initiation in the manner he wants, you kind of just go, well, if there's no orb control up yet and we aren't able to maintain that for themselves, it's going to be difficult to come back there. But it will be interesting to see if they're able to turn it around in the future here. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be looking at what is Excel Wizards.